if I teach other people, not only will um, I personally, I selfishly will get something out of it. I will be able to practice and become a better player. But there's the other side of me that I'm trying to cultivate. And that's by me being a leader, by me being able to give back to the community, you know. And there's a lot of things in my head uh, that I don't really know how to explain until I can simplify it for people into little digestible bits so people can, you know, understand. So by me conceptualizing things, it is a practice for me because a lot of things that I do are intuitive. Uh, they're beyond logic, right? So by me being able to just kind of bring this into a tangible sense, this helps me out tremendously and it helps out the community, helps the community grow, you know? So yeah, there's that. So what's up guys? How you guys feeling tonight? Before I start the lesson, I do have a question of the day. I'm gonna throw it in the chat. I'm gonna pop it up right now on this screen. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the chat right now. All right, it's a little straw poll. So, the straw poll reads. Uh, <clears throat> Let me pop it up for you. Put it on, on the screen so you guys can see it. Those of you that are on mobile devices, I did not forget about you. You guys are important too. Whew, excuse me. So, Today's question of the day is, now that Cody's gameplay has been revealed, what are your impressions leading up to his June 26th release? So, the four options are, can't wait to make people rage quit with a big ass smiley face. You're disappointed with a frowny face. You're like, eh, you know what, I'm gonna hold off till judgment, I want my, like, my judgment, because, you know, yeah, I haven't got my hands on it. You know, I'm more of a kinesthetic person, I like being hands on. Okay, so the, I got your option for those type of people. And then there's the fourth people, you know, those, those people that, are just like, when is Sagato? Because I am anticipating this character too, because I feel like he is going to be like the, how do you say, the big metaphor for the release of season three, you know? Because if he's good, then it's like, all right, damn, this season, season three wasn't that. But if he is like lackluster, then it's like, God damn, that was underwhelming. So feel free to vote. And I'm going to check on this probably next chat, the next stream on Thursday. When I do my new series, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what I got in store on Thursday. So, so you guys know, I'm pretty sure you guys saw for those that were in the, uh, in the loading screen, right? When I was booting up and just getting ready for the stream. Um, basically I am going to stream two days committed from now on. That's that no, like random sporadic stream, like on those days. Um, I will have like a third and fourth day of streaming, like maybe other games or other fighters, just random stuff here and there, right? Maybe like you guys can watch me like train leading up to a major or whatever. But the goal is Monday, seven o'clock and Thursday, seven o'clock. I have two series, Monday being Mon uh, Mastery Mondays, right? So I take a concept of Street Fighter uh, and I just break it down. You just get down to the meat of things like we just really digest things absorb it and i just try to spoon feed it to people because everybody learns differently so i'm the type of person i'm really good at explaining and conceptualizing for different people so i'll be able to you know create something and then give three different angles on it you know and then hopefully you whoever out there is having difficulty they can pick one of the different examples and latch onto the idea and really just understand it and then thursday i have a, a new series but i'll i'll get to that um, at the end of the stream So yeah, tonight's discussion Is going to be about the art of creating tech. I think that this is really important. I feel like people Especially in the community. I feel like the reason why we don't really have a face In the community is that there's not that one person that you can kind of just like lean on right for like anything for inf for Information, but they're also entertaining, but they're also a top player. So that's where I come in I'm gonna be that guy that hopefully fills that void, right? So, hi. So the goal today is to not only give you fish, but to teach you how to fish. So you're not gonna just learn how to fish and be like, well, can I get something in the meantime? But you're gonna get a big fat plate of fish, nice omega-3 fatty acids served direct from your boy. And then at the same time, you could turn around, go to training mode, learn how to fish by yourself. You don't need me. I don't need to hold the fishing rod. You're good. You know, you can do it by yourself. Go to the river. And then 
You can just do your thing. That's the point of the stream today. So before I start that, just look at my chat, see how you guys are doing, how you guys feeling. If you guys are all right, you know, I got to check on you guys. Holy smokes, I didn't even expect that many people in here. That was like, <laughs> but what's up, guys? What's going on? So let's see, I see Spy in here. What up, what up? Neo Cable, what's going on? Mr. Rain Hyena. Oh, that's my bro Chacha right there. Oh my God. Season three gave us Blanca, it's already awful. That is, you, you know what? You're not right, but you're not wrong either. Make or break for Sagat. Yeah, I agree totally, bro. What's up, Andy? What's going on, bro? I see Nell in here. He's chilling. All right. Um, probably have some lurkers. Electrical skateboard was going on. Come on, guys. That is my Fei Long dad. Let me just tell you guys right now. Hamad. That man. That man inspires. Do you see the vein on my forehead? Hold up. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me get this. Look at the vein on my forehead when I talk about Hamad. You see this? That wasn't there. It was not there. You see how intense that is? That's how intense my love for Hamad is. All right, that's my Faylong father right there. I appreciate that man. And when he wins, I win. You know, so I'm like, I'm so ecstatic for his uh, his success in Guilty Gear. He is like the standard. No book. He's the standard. I swear. I'm not even joking. Like I worked hard, right? But when I met Hamad, I learned how to work smart. I learned how to work smart. That's why. I I love that dude, man. I just ah, you make so I cannot wait to win and just be like, Ahmad. <sighs> so yeah, I just got back from DreamHack and saw you stream. So yeah, I had to tune in. I appreciate it, Ahmad. You're the man. Uh, congratulations, of course, on your victory. And that is not really your first victory, because honestly, I've seen all your smaller victories leading up to the big one that everybody sees in the public. But I'm just happy that everything kind of came together and culminated into this one you know big victory that everybody sees at the forefront at, at the front of the stage right not behind the curtains so i'm just that makes me feel so good man because it's like yo i was there when hamad was like i'm gonna be the best and i'm like damn I, I love that you know like that shit is that's amazing because he's literally that's like alchemy you're literally creating something from nothing he's creating these results in his mind and they haven't even happened yet. He's like, I'm gonna be the best. Like I already laid out the, the roadmap working backwards. That's why I'm I'm just so excited for his victory. Cause his, his victory is like my victory, you know? By seeing him win, I feel like I'm winning. And that's what it's about. Like you don't wanna just win solo. You know what I'm saying? Dichotomy is important. There are people out there that can make up for the lack, the lack of your strengths, you know, or your lack. They can make up for your weaknesses. All right, there you go. First time I got tongue tied all day. I'll be I'll be all right the rest of the stream. I promise. Let me eat my papaya. Oh, hmm. Eat your fruits and veggies, guys. So yeah. So tech. Still in here. The alarm. Word. All right, cool. So, so check this out, guys. So the art of making tech. So Hamad taught me a lot about Fei Long. So this is pretty cool that he's in here watching. And I kind of just took like his formula and I made it my own little thing. And then obviously me reading, a lot of reading, a lot of just studying like people that are successful and like how people add their own flavor to things. I think that's what's important about learning how to make tech is because not only do you you push the, the scene, you know, further, because you don't want to have a stagnant scene because then stagnant scenes die out, right? Because you want... You want it to be fresh, you want it to be new and constantly evolving because if it doesn't evolve, multiple things happen. Viewership probably goes down because people get bored of seeing the same shit, seeing the same results, you know, seeing the same people win, seeing the same characters. Um, and it's just like, you know, that's that's why it's important to develop, you know? So imagine you're affecting esports by being uh, somebody that's able to push a game forward. like. People don't really see that, but you know, that's like the ripples in the pond effect. That's why it's important. So the other thing is that when you make tech, I, I think that you are you're adding your own flavor and you're you're extending the, your expression of yourself into the game. So from what I notice, players that try to imitate other players they don't really create a connection with their viewers, you know, or the people that follow them or could follow them. They kind of just leave people out, out like on a limb 
that connection never gets established it's like a gap but the people that kind of go out of their way and they they really just express themselves they'll probably attract somebody that's like damn this is the type of play style i was looking for or hmm wow this is really captivating this one thing that this person did so this is why i like making tech personally speaking because i like people to look at me look at my cami right cami is a boring character right but if you look at my cami versus other camis you can tell you can definitely tell that there's something different about my cami like a lot of other camis you can't really tell because they use the same buttons they have the same approach yada 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 same setup same pressure you know what i'm saying and i'm not i'm not for that like if i'm gonna win i want to win my way and i want to win in a way that's new and, and fr refreshing you know not stale and eh, don't care about that what's going on shivs that's my laura brother from the uk much love to my brother he's helped me out tremendously in the past couple of months for street fighter 5 because i was lost in the sauce i'm not even gonna lie to you guys i was really frustrated with the game um but I have great friends around me that helped me get out of this, this little rut of mine that I had mentally. I imposed on myself. And now I feel fresher than ever. Went to Combo Breaker and I did really well. Almost sent NL to losers. I definitely was up on him and I was I was rocking his shit, to be honest. But I was so satisfied. I didn't really care at that point. I was like, damn, this is me. I'm beating this dude up like this and I even practice. So that's why I'm, you know, really back in full force. And then seeing obviously Hamad doing well and all my friends just like around me doing really well that I was able to help out. Not saying like I helped Hamad out and Guilty Gear, but I'm saying like the friends I helped out in Street Fighter and stuff like that. Like those people, seeing them win, seeing Hamad win and his thing, like that's what's kind of revival, rejuvenated the energy inside of me. What's Alora? I like the, oh Jesus Christ. Ugh. Get that Manat out of here. Ugh. Ugh. Give me the heebie-jeebies. All right, so, so let's see. Um. What was I? Okay, so I said like pushing the, pushing the envelope basically, the boundaries, um, expanding, you know, giving your personality out. Um, yeah, and I guess that's that's basically it you could say, right? Oh, and then obviously creating tech, you don't have to rely on anybody. I think relying on people to you know develop for you is a really bad habit because then you'll kind of be behind a lot of people and you'll be like kind of reactionary going into a tournament meaning that you're gonna you're, you're most likely gonna run into something that you don't expect as opposed to the person that develops and creates they'll be like i'm going into this tournament and i'm gonna think for my opponent and then create a possibility like this is something that would counter my strategy counter my approach because the thing is you don't want to psych yourself out right if your opponent is playing a b c or let me do it this way a b c right they're playing with an A, B, and C. You don't want to create a D and then you're trying to fight your opponent like they have a plan D, but they never had a plan D. They're just going back and forth between plan A, plan B, plan C. I'm actually going to do an example of that Thursday because um, I had a, a, a set with Yukadon and I was destroying him. And the same thing happened where I just talked about where, where I was beating him so bad. I was like, hmm, this is Yukadon and he's a top player, arguably the best in the world right now hmm he has to know to do this so i started fighting expecting him to do plan d but he never did plan d he literally just was like turn the wheel back to plan a you know and i'm just like why am i killing myself so i don't want you guys to fall for that right don't do that don't be like zaf What's up, D-Man Bats? Kakarot, what's going on? Shiv says, come to VS Fighting, please, Zach. I would totally do that, but that's a lot of money, and I'm not going to lie to you. I can't afford that. That's, I mean, it is July. I could probably do it. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? So, um, yeah. I'm, 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 maybe I might go to it. I don't know. I really would like to go to more majors, but first things first. Excuse me. I gotta be a stronger player. You know, I gotta, I gotta practice a little more, get a little more solid in certain areas, um, and then start going to NLBC. I should. I was supposed to go actually. Was it tomorrow? No, today's Monday. I was gonna go Wednesday this week, but at two hundred and thirty dollars in tickets, don't park in Boston. It's a. Don't even do it. Like it's like reading the signs in Boston is like reading hieroglyphics. If you do not know how to read hieroglyphics, don't park in Boston. Because you'll swear it's like, oh, this is a meter. 
I can park here. And you can, but then all of a sudden, at a certain time, you get towed. And it's like, why am I paying for parking at this time, but I still get towed? Why does this even give me the option? It's a trap, right? So, yeah. So, guys. Oh, um. No, I didn't get a parking ticket yesterday. I told you I wasn't going to get one, bro. Akeem, today's topic is the art of creating tech. So this way, people don't have to rely on anybody to come up with tech for their character. That's why I'm talking about this. And I think it's it's a good time to learn how to, like, do that. Especially um, as we're getting into, you know, several seasons into Street Fighter V. And then on top of that, there's the, um, you know, the 30th anniversary collection that came out. I don't want people to make it a bad habit to, you know, going and exploring tech from other games and then they try to do that with five where they just kind of get into that that really lazy habit of i'm gonna just go search for this tech and you know and then it's good to search for tech don't get me wrong like if there's an answer already out there by all means do it do it i'm totally for that but what i'm not for is when you don't find the tech and then you're just like Awkward turtle. That's just it's not conducive to anybody. So yeah. Word. So okay guys, so the thing about making tech. Alright, so I'm gonna keep this really simple. Uh and then we'll just I'll just ask you guys for questions and then I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And there's that. Hopefully you guys ask me a question I don't have an answer for, because then that means that's something uh we can figure out together. You know, because I don't want to always have the answers. It's just... That doesn't do anything for us. For me, personally. Um, but I do obviously like to answer within... The boundaries of my uh, capabilities, you know? So. Let's see. Uh, art of making tech. Let's see. So, the reason why uh, you, you'd want to have tech... Like I was saying earlier, you know... The... the ex the external reasons I told you already, the personality, you can convey yourself, your expression, you can help with the esports, you know, by keeping viewership nice and flavorful, keeping things fresh and new, different results, you know, people don't know who's going to win next. All right, cool. But in terms of being in the game, like as a strategist, as a competitive player, the reason why you want to have tech is I, I really wanted to simplify this for myself, to be honest. I kept like just dancing around words and pooping just verbiage, like all this stuff. And I was like, Staff, keep it simple, stupid. That's my favorite acronym, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid, right? So basically what I have written down here is that having tech either pushes you towards an advantage or it pulls an opponent away from theirs. That's literally it. So what I mean by that, it sounds like it's the same thing, but I'll give you an example. What's up, Brian? I'll give you an example. So let's say... um. Because the pulling an opponent away from advantage is, is the one that might be tricky. There are some situations where you're taking a, an opponent away from a particular range or, or situation, but you're still not where you want to be because your character doesn't want to be there. So I can give you a classic example. Zangief. Zangief doesn't want to be full screen. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, being max range is better than being within stand uh like max distance of stand medium kick range you know because at that range he can get anti aired really consistently you know and he can get poked because of stand medium kick but if he's slightly behind that although he's not at advantage it's better than the previous situation he's taken away a little bit of advantage from dalsam because now he can introduce different variables he can do empty jump he can whiff punish the stand medium kick or a stand first that might be coming you know, like stuff like that that's what I mean by that. So, although you're pulling away advantage, it doesn't mean you're in, in advantage yet. So you might have to keep pulling different advantages away from your opponent, and then you can start to implement your uh, your strengths, right? And a game like Street Fighter V, though, because of how um, chaotic neutral can be because of crush counters, sometimes all you have to do is do one thing, and then all of a sudden things swing back in your favor. Because it's a very momentum-based game. Whereas the other slower-paced games uh, in neutral... They can, those are the games where you play it more in like micro um, decisions as opposed to macro, right? So it's more of the little moments in the other games than this game, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. So, 
so we have that so the way you're gonna go about it is um when you want to create like this advantage or disadvantage you're gonna want to do it by means of the engine so what that means is you'd study the fundamentals of what make up a game which are the design right you should upload these to your youtube channel yeah i'm definitely gonna do that uh after i upload this so you want to study the design of the game so how do we go about studying the design well if you look at my screen above there are some indicators there what you can do is you would study the frame advantage so now street fighter 5 has this handy dandy mode where you press pause you go to frame advantage in color this isn't training mode mind you guys right you can turn it on and anytime you hit somebody this really simplifies it and shows you if it's blue that means you're at advantage which means you can move first right so this is important in a game like this which is really offensive because there's high damage the pokes are relatively short right they're not they're not as like visually accurate as you'd expect right because i'm clearly massaging her calf with my calf we're literally just making this beautiful sonnet of body contact visually but we're not actually touching each other right i mean you could pick another poke and it would work but point stance so because the pokes aren't as long then the game isn't going to be as far away if you catch my drift that means a lot of the damage is going to come from being a lot closer and the closer you are the less time you have to think so that makes the game more instinctual and preemptive than it would be reactionary by design you see so when you're making tech and you look at the design of a game now you realize well this game is offensive so if i'm going to want to create an advantageous situation for me i'm going to want to gear towards offensive gameplay and offensive decisions or you know if i'm going to be defensive it's only so it can create this pathway towards an offensive uh, implementation or initiative right so that's the focus it's offense 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 right it's very difficult in this game to just completely like shut somebody off by playing defensively uh, especially if they can vary their approaches so the engine you you study that you study the advantages right and in studying the advantages you go to a, um, any of the websites like i can give you guys an example right now let me see um we can go to street fighter oki i mean this is kind of old but this will do so let's say we do let's say we go to tool assistance website right and i can link this in the chat i'll link this right now for you guys so anybody that's never seen it can take advantage of it i believe this is good let me see Damn it, hold on. My bad. My bad, guys. Accidentally copied this the wrong way. Um hmm. let's see. Tool assisted. I'm gonna just Google it and then bring up the front page. Uh, tool assisted there it is what it's still giving me the same link um okay i don't know why it's giving me the same link but huh. all right so if you google tool assisted you guys will see it you can't miss it but anyways um so yeah so like this is the other aspect of design that you'd want to study um and this would be your advantages, right? In a game like Street Fighter where offense is important, remember we're talking about offense, one of the things of offense that's really crucial is knockdown. So when you knock somebody down, it allows you to set up your offense. And you know, the closer you are to somebody, mathematically speaking, the more pressure you're applying. And the more pressure, pressure you're applying to your opponent, the more mistakes they can make. And the more mistakes they're prone to make, the more damage you can uh, eventually uh, inflict on them. Because the goal of a fighting game, if you, if you look at uh, 
the game, health bars have to hit zero, or you have more health than your opponent when the clock hits zero. That's it. That's how you win, right? So and then we talk about the design. The game is geared towards offense, so that means we should be looking towards offense. So strengthening your offense is, is something that you should look for in terms of tech, right? But also, on the other side of things, you can learn how to strengthen your defense. Like, what tech would help me strengthen my defense? So I can get into that in a little bit. But again, we're just trying to sculpt the mindset of how to fish. This is how you fish, right? So there's obviously you can go more in depth with these things. Um, but this is just just for the sake of the stream. This is just to point you in the direction of and then if you have any more questions in regards to it, you can message me or you can even YouTube videos. I'm pretty sure there are plenty of videos on how to do this stuff. Right. But I can show you guys an example right now. So let's say this is the knockdown calculator. Uh, it's a tool assisted application. It's kind of outdated on some characters, but for the most part, it's pretty accurate still. So I'll show you guys how to go about creating a knockdown advantage. So let's take a common situation, right? In terms of tech, you obviously want to, you're going to want to establish some sort of advantage or capitalize on something that you know you're going to go into that's going to happen at some point in the matchup. So one of the things I can think of right off rip is Cammy's knockdown situation, which is going to be spiral arrow right so we click on the character it's all abbreviated right so we see cmy it's cam it's all in alphabetical order so if you don't know the abbreviation just start in order you know just kind of pronounce it alex balrog birdie bison cammy chun lee dalsam ed funk etc etc so we go here and the way tools assisted tool assisted okie calculator works is at the top all of this above these this grid of numbers all of these right here I'm going to highlight this. All of this are your knockdowns, right? So this is all your knockdown situations with the character. So anything that makes the opponent have their butt touch the ground, not like just they just touch the ground, no matter what, that is a knockdown. So these situations grant you that, right? So there's no knockdown calculator for a stand medium kick because I can't knock you down with stand medium kick unless it has the property to, right? Like certain buttons might give you a, a knockdown situation off of crush counter or you know like stuff like that but that's character specific that's up to you to figure out so we take cami and then we take our heavy kick spiral arrow right because that's a common thing you're gonna you're gonna land on your opponent so we go to spiral arrow and we click on it and you see how the number shifted if you look down here the number shifted right i'm gonna highlight it and look how everything is you see how these numbers are all here. I'm going to get into what they mean in a second. But just watch how everything shifts when I click on a completely different special. See that? Everything's moving. Everything's moving. Moved again. Moved again. The reason why it's moving, I'll show you right now. If you look to the far left over here. I wish I could just highlight this part, but I guess I can't. Oh, eh, kind of, sort of. All right, so where I'm highlighting Oki, right? Right here, where my hand is hovering. These right here. Are going to tell you the types of knockdowns so essentially the very top three in order is knockdown back roll second knockdown roll which is quick rise and knockdown which means you don't rise at all so for knockdown back roll or just back roll i just say back roll because i don't feel like saying knockdown back roll like what do i look like right i don't want to shit out words every five seconds for knockdown back roll, all you have to do is scroll across, and then the second you see at the at the very dot that you see the number one begin, that is the exact frame your opponent would rise. That's the very first frame. Number one. That is the the earliest they can do something if they back roll. Alright? And then we look slightly underneath and we see numbers again. And underneath is the knockdown rise so the reason why the knockdown rise is before the knockdown back roll is because knockdown rise happens five frames before your back roll so the easiest way to remember this is study the knockdown rise which is the quick rise so i'm going to show you guys in gameplay right so we have gameplay of let's say 
much. I as Cammy number one. You see how I'm dashing? I'm negative. I'm red. That means I'm negative, right? I'm negative because I'm red. If I do a positive button, I'm blue. So if I do spiral arrow, she was red when she you see that. Okay, I don't know why it's not showing. The, okay, this isn't I'm working how I imagined it. So don't worry about the colors for now. Thanks, Capcom. You're really helping me plead my case. All right. So when I knock down this opponent, I'm at advantage, right? How much? We have to go and look at the chart. But the reason why I'm showing you guys this is because, as you see, all you have to do is go to dummy settings. When you press start, all you have to do is hit R1 once or hit l1 twice i guess that that's your preference and you want to be weird and you go to recovery now recovery is essentially how they get up from the ground how do they get up from the ground that's literally it so after they get anti-aired and they touch the ground how do they get up after they get they get knocked down and they're on the ground how do they get up because that's the only two ways you're going to get knocked to the ground is after an air recovery or uh you bounce off the ground because you, you know that that's literally it you're going to just there's nothing else to it. Um, so, okay, I take that back, actually. If you air recover, if you get anti-aired with, a, with a, just a poke, you just land. You don't, you don't roll at all. You just touch the ground. That's it. Okay. But if, you, if your butt touches the ground, you have the option to roll or quick rise or not get up at all. So the options here, I'll show you. The, this right here, if I knock you down, you don't press anything. It just goes into this really delayed rising animation, which is called knockdown. But if I knock you down and you want to get up immediately, right? Because you want to get back to the fight before I can like dash in on you. Let's say if we got into a real life fight, right? And I just hit you with a straight. And then I didn't knock you out, but you're just laying on the ground. And we're in a real life fight. I don't think you want to just sit there. Like, unless you're fighting Debo from Friday and your name is Smokey, you don't want to get up because you want to fake like you're dead. I mean, I'm not going to let the guy have a chance to run up on me, right? So in real life, I'm a quick rise. I'm going to be like, oh shit, I just got duffed in the face. Let me get up and get back into my stance, right? But because of how, depending on how hard I hit you, I have a certain advantage. That means I can move this amount of time before you. So I knock you down, I can do that, right? So as you see, when I knock you down, I'm blue for a slight period of time. And Cammy's still red. So I can dash up and be at advantage. So the way you look at your knockdown advantage is we go back to the calculator and then we see heavy kick spiral arrow right so if i knock cammy down with heavy kick spiral arrow you'd want to look at the knockdown rise because typically this is the most common wake up option uh in my opinion i know back roll is really good but depending on the situation not really because you can get up against a lot of like characters and they would still be minus but that's another discussion for later on in the stream so let's start, let's stick to quick rise, right? KDR or knockdown rise, quick rise, whatever you want to call it. So this is the the thing that I always start with. I always start with this. The reason being because this is the fastest option for them to get up. This is the fastest option for you, the dude that you just punched in the face in real life to get up and be like, all right, let me get back into my fighting stance before you knock me out again. So this is what I always start with, right? Because if you look at where I'm hovering with my mouse, uh, you can see that this is five frames before knockdown, back roll, or back roll, or back rise, right? So anytime you do this, if you want to hit your opponent on the very first rising frame, you'd want to study the knockdown rise first and then go to back roll second. That's just my opinion. That's how I roll, okay? Because usually when people wake up first, they want to contest when people back roll they usually want to defend so that's just like a little psychological thing to keep track of anytime i'm rushing in on somebody and they're quick rising in my head i'm like oh you want to mash a button especially mika players mika, mika players are fucking notorious for that shit i'm like man i know you want to press a button i'm not stupid you're quick rising like i can see it during the animation you're quick rise. i know you're gonna press a button but if they back roll then it's like okay you know what i'm saying even people with DPs, you can use that against. Somebody has an uppercut and you see them quick rise, they're more likely to uppercut because it seems like they're in a contesting mindset. They're like, oh, I want to, I want to get, give it, yeah, give it the little, you know. Okay. 
So that's just something to keep track of, like little hints like that. So we look at this, we look at spiral arrow, right? And to figure out how much advantage we have exactly, all you have to do is look at, you can do, you can do two things. This is, this is really easy. You can do two things, right? You can, actually, you can do three. I didn't even think about this. Um, so the first thing, the easiest thing, in my opinion, is you go all the way up here to where the moves, the knockdown moves are that I first showed you, which is all of this, right? At the very top. And you go to KDR, which is knockdown rise advantage. Go to your move, which would be highlighted in green when you click it. It should already be clicked if, you know, you're doing your Oki calculator stuff. And you look at the number, which is directly underneath KDR advantage. So Kami is plus 20. So to calculate that, if you want to see the accuracy of this, is this really plus 20? According to this, to make sure everything matches up. Another way to look at this is you go to where the number one starts. Number one starts right here on this dot. Right? So I can put a little indicator there. Just press whatever, anything underneath. It doesn't really matter. And what that means is that on this frame, my opponent, who is Cami, can now do something. So they can do and They cannot do anything until this point. They cannot do anything. They can't get hit, but they also can't do anything either. Right? So we go from zero to this point, and then you look directly above, and you see two. So for every number that you see on this, it's an increment of 10. So from zero to one is 10 frames. One to two is another 10 frames. Two to three is another 10 frames. So if you do the math, this is 10, 20, 30 frames of advantage. That's the simplest way I can, I can pretty much put it for you. And on top of that, if you're still like not convinced, the third option, yes, they give you another option, right? Is on the far right, if you go and look at your rise across from your rise, you'll see plus 20. So plus 20 is exactly what we just said. See, so there's three ways of going about this to, to give you a concrete fact. Like, yo, this is exactly that, right? Granted, again, Oki uh, Calculator is a little outdated for certain characters, but I've been playing Kami long enough to know what the changes are. But this is still a really good basis to figuring out, you know? Um, if you can put this alongside with any of the recent changes, like from the apps, there are a bunch of apps you can download, like Frame it, uh, Frame yeah, Advantage, I think. I don't know, the stuff like that on iTunes or on Android, Google Play. There's a bunch of apps, free apps too, mind you. So you can get tons of stuff like that. It's really accessible. So it's just good to cross-reference this alongside those apps. That's just my suggestion. That's just the fishing. I'm trying to teach you guys how to fish, right? Okay. So we go back to Spiral Arrow. And it's plus 20. Okay. On quick, quick rise. So then we can test this. So what we want to do is that after we figure out the, the quick rise, right? Which is KDR. What we want to do is have a button that hits on frame 1 through 3. Because the fastest button in this game... Is three frames but when you study the engine like i was telling you guys earlier priority is a thing so let me show you guys an example of that right so we go to gameplay and i'm gonna do a frame trap i'm gonna set cami to do on guard recovery so guard recovery is basically if you match the button the fastest possible timing let me put the slow down so you guys can see this put it for three seconds right Based on when I do this, is the if you see reversal, that means that's the fastest possible timing that the 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 uh, computer will press that button. Fastest timing, right? Because like knockdown, lockstone has the same kind of fundamental truth to it, where it's like for X amount of frames, you are you are or are not capable of doing something. Either you or your opponent. Okay, and sometimes you're both at at neutral. So they have the slowdown feature for people that have a hard time timing it. I'm really used to it, so I don't really have to put the slowdown. Um, and you can change your interval setting. So like I always leave it on one because I'm just so used to it that I'm just in and out. But some people, they might want to have a little countdown so they can anticipate, you know, because not everybody's at the same skill level. Like some people have to learn to crawl before they walk, you know, and that's totally fine. That's why we're here. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm pretty sure there was a point in time where Daigo did not know how to throw fireballs and look at him now. He doesn't even think about that. So... Baby steps, guys. So we go to set guard recovery actions. So the guard recovery action that you recorded previously, which was slot one for my jab, right? Because her crouching jab is her fastest button. You typically want to do your 
fastest button for this for because that's the wake up option right so let's say i put guard recovery actions on to match it the same slot so the way you test this is you could set it to guard all and press a button does she immediately jab yes okay and just to make sure that this works we look at our frame data and let's say we find a button um that's zero do i have a button that's zero on block uh hmm Amy does not. I don't think she does. Let's see. No, she doesn't. Um, so what I could do instead is I'll use stand light kick for this example. Stand light kick is plus one on block, right? If if you guys look really closely at I'm gonna I'm gonna drag myself. I'm gonna be like a magician right here. Alright. If you guys look really closely at this. What's up, KO? What's going on, brother? Watch this when I press stand light kick what it says plus one see where my finger is where i'm caressing this button caressing it just right that is going to tell you how much advantage you're at boom plus one it's kind of hard to see this really fast but look at it again one wait get closer get closer like michael jackson said see plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one again plus one again plus one again don't mind me getting hit i'm just trying to show you the, the blue part Plus one. See how it's plus one? Okay. So, if you want to make sure that this button is our fastest button, right? Okay, what you could do is stand short into a uh, into a four frame button. Because four minus one. You know, my opponent cannot move for one frame because I have one frame of advantage. That's what the plus one means. That's what that means, right? That means I can't... I have the advantage for one frame so for one frame i can do whatever the fuck i want i can read a book i can cook i can clean but it has to be done in one frame otherwise i'm gonna get slapped in the middle of me using mr clean right so we use this as a measurement tool i'm plus one so now i want to do something that's at least three frames and faster to counter hit or because we study the design of the game i'm going to show you something in a second but let's say i have a three frame couch and jab right so if i do this this is should counter hit counter hit right and if you want to see it trade watch this i'm gonna do a four frame button see how we both got hit at the same time okay and now what i said earlier about tech right is you want to study the engine of the game first you want to learn the rules and the parameters so we know in this game this is something i'm gonna show you guys there's priority what priority means is that if we press a button at the same exact time imagine some super anime shit where i'm just like ah! okay let me put myself next to this walking zombie and this zombie's about to punch me okay the zombie disappeared i guess he got scared it's all good he didn't want no beef anyways but say that zombie was about to punch me and i was about to punch him at the same time and we just like we're like this right like literally just uh, same exact time we just hit each other if my punch is stronger than my opponents even if we hit at the same frame it's like i'm invincible like imagine i just turn to superman i'm like doo, 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 and then i'm like no fuck you i'm gonna beat you boom and i beat you literally that's literally priority that's like no I, I don't care you're gonna walk to brooklyn and get me cheesecake that's what it means that's literally what's happening so if i do this right i'm gonna do back medium punch so the reason this is going to work is because priority is essentially this. The heavier your button, the 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 more strength it has over the lighter buttons. So in Street Fighter V, as you can see, let me get my Houdini magic over there. So over here, you will see that I'm going to press a couple of buttons, right? Let me just wiggle the stick. Let me Harlem shake. Get awake. All right, cool. You're going to see that I'm going to press light over here right boom so that's a light you see how it's blue medium heavy okay so the light indicates the blue indicates light yellow indicates medium and red indicates heavy so you kind of think of it like a stoplight like if i go through this what's more likely to give me a bigger ticket i'm not gonna get a big ticket if i go through a green light or a blue light right like, I don't know where the hell they'd have a blue light. Maybe in Sweden or some shit, because Sweden's pretty cool. Yellow light's like, ah, oh, you better think about slowing your car down, because if you go through this red light, you're gonna get fucked. And then the red light is like, uh, you're screwed. Now you got a big-ass ticket. Just, just waiting for you to pay. Right? And you don't want that. 
So that's how priority kind of works. Let's think of it like this. The stronger, the bigger, the pay. The stronger the button, the more damage it's going to do. It's kind of like a ticket. So it's like, I don't want to go through this red light. The yellow light, I can probably get away with it. Blue is good. I can go. So we got this. We got blue. Right? So this is your lights. Mediums, heavies. So heavy is gonna be like, you need to obey the law. If I'm pressing red, you stop. This is good. I'm not telling you not to stop. I'm just saying this is like the strength. It's like at the top of the court. It's telling medium to know I have more priority over you. And yellow is like, I have more priority over you, blue. You know? So when I do this, this frame trap I'm about to show you, this is why a trade doesn't happen. Trades happen in this game only with special attacks and with... um with normals of the same strength in the hierarchy of buttons. The light, mediums, lights and lights trade, mediums and mediums trade, heavies and heavies trade. Same thing goes for unique attacks, all right? So this right here, counter hits, right? This trades because it's a light, my light kick and Cami's light punch, right? But this back medium punch is four frames, all right? This is for a frame, so this should trade, but because of priority, this happens. Counter hit. That's the me stepping up and being like, I'm the big brother. That's basically what just happens, right? So I say all of this to say, the reason why I'm bringing up this example of priority is that when you meaty somebody, right? And I'm gonna show you guys right now. You don't have to be frame one. You don't have to be frame one to beat somebody uh, when they're pressing a jab. You can be frame, let me see. Can I zoom in on this? Uh, how do I zoom in? How do I zoom in on this app? What is going on? What's up, Chris? Yo, my homie Chris is in here? That's my bro right there. I appreciate you, Chris. You're the man. All right, so let me see. Let me see. Okay. Uh, where is the zoom? Oh, here it is. All right, bet. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, cool. Let's. No! 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 Is this how Jack felt on Titanic? Like, I feel so betrayed right now. God, why did I shut that off? I'm such a noob. Such a noob. I didn't mean that. Why? Why? That happened. Such a noob. Oh my god. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Forgive me. I'll be right back. Let me fix this. Let me see. Um, window capture. Uh, okay. We're back. Oh my god, I'm missing my head. I don't think this is good for my brain. I can't teach anymore. My brain's missing. This is so stressful. Alright, I'm back. I recovered. I got my sensu bean. So, we go back to Cami. And we go back to this example of heavy kick spiral arrow, right? Boom. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in again. All right. So we look at heavy kick spiral, all right? So we look at the frame one. We know I'm, I'm at 20 frames of advantage. That's why the number one doesn't start on where the two is. It starts a frame after, right? Because I'm at it. I can do whatever I want for 20 frames. I can cook. I can clean. I can take a shit. You can't do anything until this number one appears. That's when your opponent is like, the one that's getting knocked down is like, okay, now I can do something. Now I can block or I, I can make it a decision. That's literally what it means. They can make a decision. Until this happens, the game decides for them. The game says, hey, Cammy, guess what? You're going to get knocked down and there's nothing you can do about it. That's, that's it. Oh, well, let me turn that off so you guys can see it. So, right, I, I knock her down. Oh, my God, Cammy, behave. I didn't even have to do that. What's wrong with me? I could have just literally kept this on. So yeah, I knocked you down. She has to recover until that point where she can press a button on wake up, right? So she can't do anything until she gets up. That's what that number one means. 
Okay. So you go back to this. So I bring all of this up the priority and stuff because when you think of meaties, like true meaties, um, you would want to hit during the startup frames of their fastest move. And in this game, that's three frames. So you'd want to hit frame one or frame two with light buttons. Or because of priority, what you can do now is that you can do it on frame three. So I'll give you an example. So all I have to do is have a button with more priority than light. And we look back at what we talked about. We talked about how mediums and heavies have more advantage than lights. All I have to do is, is put that heavier attack, the medium or the heavy, on top of that frame number three or number two or number one of wake up. So the first three frames of somebody getting up, the first three frames that somebody can decide to come back and punch me in my face, as long as I'm on top of them and I'm already active, like in a fight, if I wind up my punch, that's a startup. I'm starting up. How long it's out there for, how long you can run into it, like a dweeb, right? Like you're just like, doo -doo 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 -ah! That's active frames. And the recovery is like, how long does it take for me to bring my punch back and then do something else? That's the recovery. I love giving that example out because it's so simple. I knock you down. I just got to do that. I got to be active. My button has to be out uh, on frame three against normal attacks, right? To stop you from pressing a normal attack. Because that's what you want to do. You want to make your offense oppressive. So the tech that we're trying to cultivate here is just how to make our offense that much more oppressive, just, just scarier. It just feels like you're constantly on top of them, right? They just have no room to breathe. That's how, that's how your offense is going to be in this game. That's how it needs to be. So we take the Oki calculator. Now we go into the next phase of this. So when you are trying to figure out how to get a meaty, this is the next phase. You have these numbers. Underneath the knockdowns, you have Oki 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So what this means is, you basically want to do math. You want to make it so A plus B equals 21. That's literally it. So I want to do two moves that A plus B equals 21. So how do we do that? So we scroll down, and we have a list of stuff here. We have a list of all of her normal attacks and special attacks in the game, and unique attacks. Every single one, right? And we have her V-Trigger activation, her super. We have all of that stuff. All of the advantages, all the active frames, all of that. And then another chart, which people might not notice, is that underneath it, you have the same exact thing, but it's in order of the highest amount of frames, aka the highest amount of time it takes for that move to complete, to the lowest. Right? So we see that her most active or her total move, the the slowest move from start to finish from startup to active to recovery the entire package because that's the package of a move right you have the startup the active and the recovery the entire move from beginning to middle to end is 70 frames and that's her razor edge slicer which is her um basically her hooligan but you don't press anything so it takes 70 frames exactly until i can do something like until i can block basically that's what it means you can still do stuff in between it because it has a cancel window but as far as blocking or doing another move that's outside of that special range, I can't do anything unless I deal with that situation by canceling it or just waiting for blocks to happen or recovery to happen. So what we want to do is we want to equal 21. So what we do is we go down here and we try to look at moves that would equal 21. So we see, hmm, all right, well, I want my button to hit on frame 21. So what I could do is, let's go back. We could work backwards a little bit. You can just delete. Anytime you mess up, you just click on it and just hit delete on your keyboard and you can delete it off of your, um, off of your chart. So I want my move to hit on frame one. So I'm gonna click here. And anytime you click on one of the dots, the button that you select below is gonna automatically be put there on the first frame. So let's say I wanna hit meaty with my stand medium punch because it has priority. What I would want to do is I would want the A, the first A, to be right here. So what I have to do is keep moving this back until the first A, boom, is right there. You see? Look at that. That means that it hits frame one. 
So now what I have to do is, well, hmm, I have to bridge the gap. I can manually time it, but in a game like this, you mess up once, you might die. I don't think it's worth it. You know, sometimes you can go for it because you might want to psych somebody out and they, they notice that you're not frame killing and you're trying to do it manually. And then they're like, oh, okay, shit, let me try to press a button. And then you so happen to hit them. But for the most part, it's really good to kind of sequence your offense. That way you don't have to think too much about it. You just kind of dial it in. You know, that, that's literally it. So we go to Oki 1. So we're trying to fill in the gap, right? So what we need is we need something that is exactly, what is this, 17? So we need something that's 16 frames, I believe. Let me see. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so something has to hit or, or something has to recover by 15 frames. So that means that if I wanted to dash, I would actually be a frame too slow because our fur dash is 16 frames. All right. So. If I want to hit it frame one, I either have to do something that's shorter than this or I have to pick a different button. You see, because I can't start this up until the next frame, but that means I won't hit frame one. That's not a bad thing, but we're just trying to, for comparison's sake, we're trying to keep this example as strict as possible and we're trying to make this hit frame one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Oki Calculator, or the, the first part, the Oki one, and we're going to delete this, right? So then we say, all right, well, I can't do a 16 frame. So is there anything that's 15 frames? Hmm. There's something that's 14. So let me do this. So I go to Crouch and Light Kick. But there's a gap. So I say, shit. There's a gap. Hmm. Well, there's a gap. So what if I move my stand medium punch a little bit earlier? Oh, I still have an extra active frame. And what happens is now, instead of whatever frame data that this was originally, when you first, when you use the move, because it's hitting a frame later, you now add one plus of advantage to the move. So for example, my state medium punch is plus three on block. If you guys want to see an example, boom, I got examples on deck. So you know I ain't lying, right? Oh, don't get hit, Cammy. You want to block. So we go back to this and I'm going to levitate. So right here, you'll see right there that I am plus three. If you see, I'm going to do it again and again so you guys can kind of see it because it kind of goes fast. Plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three, right? Now, I want you guys to see something. So I'm going to knock down Cammy. And I'm going to do this exact setup. The setup was we do crouching light kick and immediately do stand medium punch. And against quick rise, this will hit on the second active frame, not the first. So that means we add one more A for advantage, right? So you can think of active as advantage. They both start with the letter A, right? And you can add one more A, which means one more advantage frame. So now instead of it being plus three, it should be plus four. And we can go and check it by going to the game, right? And check this out. So I'm going to do this exact setup. So we do heavy kick spiral. And we do that. So now what I want to do is I'm going to try to, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to keep doing this until hopefully you guys can see it. So I'm going to do it like a couple of times, but pay attention to this part. Don't worry about the set. Don't worry. Don't look at Cammy. I know she's GQ smooth and she looked like she can be on a calendar, but focus on the numbers. Be a nerd for a second. All right. And then at recess, you can go back to just being all googly eyed. So I'm going to do the setup. Don't look at the setup. Look at the number that look at this. This was this was originally plus three. See that plus three Uh, after this plus three. You see that? She got hit by a stand light kick, so I want you to see the block. So now you're gonna see it's gonna say plus four. Plus four. Plus four. Plus four. Plus four. Oh, wrong one. Do it again. Boop. Do it again. Boop. All right, cool. So that's really good so you know and with certain buttons that you might be negative you actually can end up possibly making it positive if it has x like a, a lot more active frames involved because then you can extend it and try to hit as late as possible in the move 
that way you can increase your chances of getting plus frames and i can show you i have some pretty scary shit where i do that and this is where coming up with tech is important because now when you start to see this stuff you start to think outside of what is traditional with the character and i'll show you some of my stuff later which is which is really funny in my opinion i really love the stuff that i come up with um so we go back to this and and i'll show you so this right here is on the second active frame right so now what i'm going to demonstrate is what if the opponent wakes up with a crouching light punch right because you'll see that i'm going to interrupt her she's going to get hit meaty she can't jump she can't do anything she can only thing she can do is an invincible attack or an invincible move or that's or block that anything else is going to get counter hit unless it's an armor with like a you know first frame like anything that doesn't start up frame one she's gonna get hit that's pfft. sorry that's it so go here and now i'm gonna do the same exact setup so now you guys can pay attention to cami this is all right so what how much advantage do i have let's see plus 10 so instead of this being seven right it's counter hitting which now makes it plus nine but because it's hitting the second active frame it's now plus 11 oops Didn't do it right. plus 10 plus 10 there you go plus 11 would be hit the last active frame so now i can create different i could come up with different combos because of that you know what i'm saying so now you, you have like uh some pretty cool flexibility and you know combo creations and stuff like that um but now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna back this up and this is gonna be basically the last lesson as far as okie calculator is to just demonstrate the priority aspect so we'll take another medium poke we'll do we'll do crouching medium punch a crouching medium punch and you see this hits on the last active frame and we'll do the same exact setup same exact setup all right oh shit whoopsies plus nine so this combo that never works on counter hit right I'll show you. Never works. Now all of a sudden works. See? So now you can do all sorts of cool stuff. Oh, let me see. Oh, oops. I have never done that before. That was pretty cool. That was a pretty cool hit confirm. But you see, that's that's what I'm saying in terms of tech. You want to stretch the boundaries. And to stretch the boundaries, you have to go a little bit beyond the surface of what people look at. People just kind of look at what's plus on block and this and that. But you got to set up the situations too. So this is how you can at least express yourself more by stretching the boundaries of the character. Is by understanding the engine. That's why understanding Oki, the advantages on knockdown are really important. That's why I really, really stress taking advantage and leveraging this because this is like a playground of things like if you think the game is stale which i can definitely see at the surface level there's a lot more fun to be had i, I used to get really bored with cammy but i found so much fun shit with her i'm like yeah, i just want to hit all of this stuff you know and it just feels so good like one of the things that i absolutely love right i hit nl with this and his reaction was so funny i hit nl with let me show you oh oops full screen So Cammy's crouching fierce is on counter hit. It is plus three, right? So you can't reach with that. But if you're in V trigger, you can do this. That's 320 damage off a of, off a of counter hit. Like I don't really have to commit to anything, and it's a fierce button. So even if they're trying to crush counter me because of how fast it is compared to most heavies in the game, it's nine frames. I'm more likely to trade with you right it leans forward so when i frame trap from it it's it's very hard to make it with especially if you're cornered and then if you're doing delayed jab thinking i'm gonna walk up and throw you 
this th that's how i got nl because i knew i conditioned nl to to keep delay tacking so i was like okay and then there was that one moment where i just like crouching fierce them and then counter hit boom 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 yeah i wonder if i can get ex off of this no i can't okay can you shoot this nah let's try to see if you can link it Yeah, it probably hits on frame four. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah, so. Where, where are you guys at mentally? You guys, you guys following along? Is this like. Is this easy to follow? Damn, I don't even have my Twitch chat up. I feel like I mismatched shit. I'm sorry, guys. Forgive me, please. Forgive me, please. Oh, what's up, Ice? Okay, that's my dog right there. What up? And Bam, what's going on, brother man from the motherland? Electrical skateboard, Kakarot, d State Gold, Damn It Dom, Commander Root, Chef Wavy. That was a terrible wave. I I apologize. I could definitely wave better than that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Um Carlton Banks, what's up? What's up? Nate DZ, what's going on? Mr. Cheeseburger. My name is Boris. Nelbaum, of course. Appreciate you guys. Where, where, where? All right, so let's see. Um, what was I going with these? Oh, yo, Van, what up, bro? Chacho, perfect timing as always. The impeccable, unexpectable, Mr. A. A of. A A A A A of five twenty. Van, how you doing, brother? You doing all right, man? Yo, somebody tell Lee Chunk to stop inviting me. Or I'm gonna go to his stream and just raid that shit. All right, so let's see. Um, so what else? What else? Oh yeah, yeah. Let me show the priority stuff. So to demonstrate to the priority, I want this to purposely hit frame three. I'm going to purposely make it so it doesn't hit frame 1. The reason why you do want to hit it frame 1 sometimes is because against characters that have armor, like Birdie or Zangief, where they have armor on frame 3, you you don't... You typically don't want to get into that mix-up. Uh, like, Zangief is fast enough to where he can command grab your EX, I think, with... He might be able to with the uh, running bear grab. Um, so instead of having that guesswork, you just do frame 1 and it'll counter hit every single time because it doesn't have frame 1 armor. Birdie... You'd want to frame one against him, even though he has frame one armor and V-Trigger, you can cancel it into another button and it'll counter hit him out of the armor. So that's why frame one is really important. So so we go to this. So I want to hit my strong on frame three, right? Just to demonstrate the pro um the priority. So now I go to Oki one and I look at the difference. So this is what 18 frames? That's that's what it is. So I have I have to have a plus seven a 17 frame total. That's it. Because if you look over here, it says this starts on frame 18. So I want to be at 17, right? So we go to the dot over here. And you want to start the earliest dot, of course. So we go scroll down. And we have a 17 frame. Let's see. Ah, crouching medium punch. We have crouching medium punch or stand medium punch. All right. So I could just... So can I just double crouch strong? What the hell? Hmm. Wait a minute. Wait, what? Okay, hold up. Oh, yeah, I need some set. Wait, what? Oh, I need 18. Yeah, you're right. Fail. Okay. So. Okay, so two chain jabs. So chaining jab twice will give me an exact 18 frame kill. So we call it frame kill because that's basically like occupying space. So I'm trying to occupy 18 frames with an action. So that way I can get A plus B equals whatever you know the 21 or whatever the math is for this situation it's not 21 now because i'm not doing frame one so it's not 22 it's 23 because i'm trying to hit third active frame so i'll hit on frame 23 so yeah this should work so we demonstrate that we go back and we try it so we go wait oops 
I like mentally pooped in my head. I was like, what was I supposed to do? Okay, so two jabs. Ah, time is put. No. Turn off counter hit. There you go. I'm getting counter hit because I'm not jabbing early enough. That whiff because I I didn't chain the second jab. There you go. So that's how I would get it to be frame three. And I'm hitting on the same exact frame and it's still counter hitting because of the priority system. So that's how you would flex the option of a priority on wake up. So that way, you know, you can really just be on top of your opponent and and maintain an advantage because it's really good to hit to meaty with medium attacks because if you meaty with medium attacks the later you meaty it the less pushback you have so example right if i do let me try this again. Ah! that works right that that would not work otherwise that whiffs that whiffs 100 percent of the time even on crouching characters Oh, actually, no, it hits on crouching. Yeah, it hits on crouching, but on standing, it won't. So let's say you have, like, um, if you have, like, a like an Abuki who has a standing three-frame light, because you're hitting later in the, the frames of the animation, the, the pushback is, is less, so that way you'd still be close enough to get the back strong counter, even if they do a standing normal. So this is working really easy because i don't have to do this like third actor frame because cammy's crouching button is the three frame so she's gonna be crouching most likely right so because of that this makes this a lot easier so we do that's something i need to be doing too by the way i, I like every time i meet you with this and i hit i do that instead of doing that for more damage so yeah um so for so that that's tech for the oki right so that's the like, oki aspect of the game so in terms of like that that's how i would flourish that um so now we can get into like the other simpler aspects well i don't think they're simpler because everything's complex in its own way to be honest i'm not even gonna lie to you what's up kimura Take it off. I ain't never been this happy in my life besides the birth of my kids. Yo, I dig it, brother. You got to get some time to yourself sometimes. You know, you get like a mental reset. Totally off track. I was talking to a doctor today at work, right? So for those that don't know, I work at a hospital. And um, so I was just talking to this like patient. And he so happened to be a, a doctor at the hospital. And he retired in 2004. So I was like, oh, shit. Like, oh, this is pretty cool. And we were just talking. And he was just like making like these really like sarcastic ass jokes about like life and stuff but you can you can sense behind his sarcasm like there was like some real gems and i feel like he was trying to tell me something and i was talking to him and he was just like you know i've never been happier um after retiring because i actually picked up on the things that i really love you know and like being a surgeon was just like being a robot just non-stop facts and there's very little room for expression because these are people's lives, obviously. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no room for expression when you do shit like that. It's like, I'm going to do this to get this. That's that. You know? Um, and if you fuck up, you don't want to fuck up. Like, you can fuck up and be creative in other areas of life. And, you know, like painting or something like that. And you might create something beautiful. There's nothing beautiful out of fucking up and then you kill somebody. Right? But um, I say that just to say, like, I don't know if anybody in the chat is just like, you know going through something where they just feel kind of lost like they feel like they're not where they want to be you might just actually be a lot closer to that than you where you, than what you think or what you want to believe you know because we kind of get caught up in the tangibles we get caught up in like black and white you know but we kind of forget that there are x factors you can't really account for in life there are things that are outside of your control you know what i'm saying and the things that are outside of your control are just there as a precursor in my opinion at least from what i've experienced bro and i've had tons of really fucked up shit happen to me uh not like saying i have a horrible life but i'm just saying you know there, i've had my struggles right but every single time on the other end of some tragedy was some crazy triumph and i was like oh i would have never guessed so like as i'm getting old i'm 25 now 
I'm like, anytime something bad's happened to me, like some something recently happened to me, that was like the worst thing that's ever happened to me, in my opinion. But after it, I was like, like during it, I wasn't even like moved. I was like, I had my like little like sulking, whatever, you know, that's human. But then I was like, you know what? I've overcome everything else. Why can't I overcome this? You know what I'm saying? So and that's what it is. It's just you focus and then you work. You work and you just become better as a human being. You overcome these things. K.O. Thuggery, what up, man? Question, what's ways to spot and punish people who tech on Wake Up? Um, what ways to spot and punish people who tech on Wake Up? Um, you can hit them with a meaty. So when somebody wakes up with a throw on, on Wake Up, it's one of two things. They're trying to throw you out of you doing nothing. Nah, I don't want to even say do nothing. Let me simplify it even more. If somebody's throwing on wake up, it's one of two timings. It's immediately on wake up because they think you're delaying. Let me give you an example. Let's say I knock down Cammy and I do and I do this setup. Right? Fuck. I do this setup, right? Cammy then has bar and I'm like I think she's gonna DP in my fucking face right now. I think I'm about to eat like a cool 160 damage to the grill. I ain't trying to eat that, right? I block. I say, you know what? I had to, I'm gonna just block. I don't know why I picked the button, but I block. But instead, Cammy's like, let's say like somebody that's really into the mind game, they just wake up throw. They back throw, you know, you're in the corner. It's like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, God damn it. That's the timing that of immediate text. Those people, you just, you can literally just meaty. Meaty them like they're meeting a button. Like you're, you're trying to meaty a button. Same, same principle. Plus it's slower, it's five frames. So now you have actually more room to work with as opposed to three, which is usually the fastest button for a character. Uh, that's the fastest button by far is three. Nothing faster than that unless it's a super. And that's it. So, excuse me. If they do it immediately, that's the really easy way to in my opinion. But now if they delay tech on wake up, you have different options. So what you could do is when you frame trap somebody, instead of meeting them, now you want to delay it. So I give you guys a visual of that, right? So peep this. Let's go back to this for a second. Let's pretend, let me just delete this shit. Boom. Let's pretend my opponent is meeting around here, right? Let's say they're meeting, uh, uh, they're, they're teching right here. Let's say they're waking up right here, right? Frame one, but they're teching like around, eh, like six frames after they wake up. Let's just say that, right? Let's say that. What I would want to do is, you know, do, do my standard stuff. But as soon as I go for the meaty, I just delay my meaty. That's it. So instead of me doing this, Right? Because they would be blocking, technically, right? So let's say I do this. I'm going to have Kami do this, this setup to me. I'm going to actually record this. So I'm going to do this dash up, stand medium punch, right? This is against uh, Quick Rise. So let's see. All right. Okay, so this, yes, this works. I'm going to show you guys. Visual. Dash up, stand medium punch. It hits media, right? Okay. Can they jump? Let me see. Oh, oops. No, they can't jump. They get hit, right? Boom. You have three frames. Uh, it's four frames to leave the ground. So if I hit within the first three frames, like a jab, like if I'm trying to hit a jab, then they stay on the ground, right? So let's say I'm going to have Cammy. I'm going to record Cammy doing that same exact setup against me. Right? So the thing about delay tech, like my, my brother here was uh, asking about, right? If I delay tech, well, let me show you. If I wake up and throw, I'm gonna get counter hit. So this is, that's really easy to deal with, right? That's, 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 eh, whatever. But if I wake up and I delay tech, you see how I blocked? I'm gonna do it again. Oh, oops. Give me the block there. <laughs> That's delay tech. So that's the question he's asking about. How do you deal with that situation? So we go back to the numbers. I like to bring up the numbers because there are some people that are, you know, numbers guys. Right? And it helps with 
explaining the other points that I'm going to bring home. So you have this. You have this situation, right? Right up here where I showed you. I've, I've recorded Cammy doing this exact same thing, right? Literally. But let's say I'm teching around five, six, seven frames, right? All I want to do is literally time it. So I'm doing this instead. I really, I just want to leave enough of a gap just so I can hit them when they're doing it. So I'm going to show what that looks like. So let me record this same exact situation again, right? But now I'm going to introduce a slight delay. Well, that was way too much. See, and I got, I got hit. That's how you would deal with that. You basically just want to delay your button. So let's say you don't want to do that. You're like, uh, I don't really want to do that because, you know, manually timing in this game, again, is kind of like suspect. What I like to do, because I'm an asshole, right, when I play this game. I, I love reading people. I love showing somebody, like, I know what you're doing. That's just how I like to play, you know? What I do is I do something that's more accurate right and more unique so what i like to do is i'll do a button that instead of me delaying for that many frames just have a button that's that many frames slower that makes sense so i'm gonna show you guys so let's say we go back to the numbers so instead of me making my stand medium punch uh now eight frames right or whatever let me just replace this button let me do something slower let me do uh a crouching heavy punch See, so now I went from a, from a six frame button to a nine frame button. So that would cover that, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is when you think somebody is doing something immediate, immediately punish it. If you think somebody's delaying something, immediately punish it with a delay. Ah. That's what you gotta do. Watch. So let's say, I'm gonna have Kimmy do this. I'm gonna have her do it again. Oh. Wait, wait. Okay, alright. There you go. I blocked it, right? Blocked it, right? But now I introduce. The crouching heavy punch, which is three frames slow, uh, slower. I can counter hit. That's how you want to punch. You see, I was still committing to it the same but Like, I pressed the button the same way, but the actions took longer. So it punishes the delay. You want to counter a delay with something that's slightly delayed. It's, it's a little bit faster than that. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I got to look at it. So you start to get creative. Like, instead of you wanting to meaty with the buttons, you know, like... That's what you'd want to do. That's one option. Another option, which is really good, depending on the player, like depending on what defensive options they jump between, you can do this. You can shimmy. Right. So that's another option. Um. You can do a shimmy on the ground and you can do a shimmy in the air. That's something that people kind of forget about. What I mean by that is you can do this. Oh, whoops. I didn't I didn't do that low enough with Cammy. Boom. That's another option on how you go about punishing it. So now you have like a plethora. You have multiple ways of going about punishing one thing. You don't really want to get caught up in uh, doing one thing all the time. Unless it works. If it works, keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? But like, 
if it's if neither of the things are working out or whatever, then they're probably not doing the thing that you're trying to punish. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you might as well just try to go about doing something different. I think shimmying is the safest option, um, and because it requires the most commitment of the three, in my in my opinion, like. If you shimmy, you're blocking at the same time. So that means they'd have to wake up and hit you with a low poke. Because you're walking away. Even if they poke you with a jab, it's a jab. Like, it's very unlikely they're gonna they're gonna be able to convert from it afterwards. You know? So when you shimmy, like I, it's funny how the evolution of this game is working out where like people are doing things and then it's kind of reverting back to shimmies, but then it's going away from shimmies, but then it's like, you know, like I still think shimmies are like the strongest in terms of uh offense because when you pressure somebody you tend to get a lot of information after you shimmy because when you walk away you got all of this information without doing anything i think that's really important you walk away and then you see did he do anything he didn't do anything or did he do something did he do something did he jab did he throw when did he do it did he do it immediately did he delay it did he move? Did he backdash? Is he really willing to block? If I walk back in again, is he going to immediately press a button? If I walk in, he doesn't do anything. What if I walk back out? Does he do anything then? What is he looking for? What's his focus? These are questions you got to ask yourself because anything in life, anytime you ask questions, questions bring focus, right? So it's like, people are like, oh my God, I hate my life. Like, what the fuck, bro? Like, damn, bro. Ah. Okay. You're bringing your focus towards negativity, pessimism, you know, like conflict. That's what your focus is. But when you're like, okay, what can I do to get out of this situation? What can I do to alleviate or solve this problem? That's a completely different realm of thinking. And it sounds so like, eh, I don't know, it just sounds like, oh, you're just kind of positivity talk. Yeah, I mean, it is positivity talk, but that's the thing. It's trajectory. You know, like if you look at astronauts right so you look at uh, nasa whenever they send out rockets into into space they literally pay millions of dollars to hire the most like inept expertise mathematicians on earth because if they are off by a degree that can literally mean the difference between them landing where they're supposed to land them being completely off trajectory or the actual rocket blowing up and you know Obviously, the latter half, you don't want to happen, right? You want the primary thing to be you landing where you're aiming for. But in order to aim where you want, you got to look there. You know what's funny? If you look at NASCAR drivers, right? I love this metaphor, by the way. Take this with you for the rest of your life. NASCAR drivers, when they're about to crash, you know they don't actually look at the wall? That's, that's crazy to me. I was like, what? They look away from the wall. They look at where they're trying to drive towards. Because if you're about to crash and you look at the wall... And you're trying to drive away from it. Like your body physiologically is not going to, it's not going to interpret, especially because of all those hormones, everything's fucking firing off in your brain, emotions and adrenaline. You're not going to be like really like in tune, you know, with your hand eye coordination and stare away from the wall. So what they got to do is they look away and they shift their focus. And they're like, instead of me being like, ah, don't hit the wall. They're like, oh, let me drive this way. Ugh. They still might hit the wall. But the effects of the impact are significantly less, you know? So that's how you kind of got to treat problems. You got to treat problems in the game and in life that way. If you hate a matchup and you keep focusing on how you hate the matchup, guess what's going to happen? You're going to keep fucking hating the matchup. Me, prime example. I, kept, I didn't like the game. I didn't enjoy the game. I kept focusing on how I didn't like the game. And guess what? I didn't like the game. Was a combo breaker? And I was like, wait a minute. This is Street Fighter. What am I doing? Like, I almost beat NL by playing the way I used to play. And I was like, wait a minute. Let me focus on what I should be focusing on. And it completely changed the game for me. Now I feel like it's a brand new game. I feel like I never played Street Fighter V until I went to Combo Breaker. I've been playing two years of this game called Emotional Fighter V starring Zephyrino. And I was losing at that shit. 10-0, you know, listening to the community, letting all this toxic pollution get into my mind and seeping in. But then I was like, you know what? I'm done with that shit. Findissimo. Ah, got rid of it. And now look, now I'm here, I'm teaching, I'm having fun, enjoying the game. And I start, I want to compete again, I want to travel, and I, I feel like, I don't know if I want to be the best, but I definitely want to be the best version of myself, you know? And in order to do that, um, in this game, I have to be a better person every day. Definitely. Also, 
give a little shout out. If you guys like reading, to my homies that like reading, this book right here, Emotional Intelligence 2.0. This right here, let me tell you, this book straight up mind fucked me. Like, like you know how like Daigo whiff punished uh, Arturo's stand heavy punch in Street Fighter Four, and then he did super full screen with Ryu. That that's what this book did to me. I was like, <laughs> right? That's that book is godlike. Anybody that's having like any sort of you know uh, depression or anything like that, and is willing to go about it in an intellectualizing manner, you know, like staying away from medicine and stuff like that. You know, some people don't like to meditate. I love meditating. Some people, they'd rather go about intellectualizing. So if you want to do it the intellectual route, that book is amazing. That book is, whew. Me, I like to learn. I can learn multiple ways. So I do the meditating. I do the intellectualizing, all that good stuff, whatever. But yeah, so I don't want to get too off topic, but... um. So yeah, I'm sorry for pooping words, guys. I'm just like kind of like in the blender right now but um what the hell was i talking about i was talking about the wall driving cool yeah the bada bing bada boom oh yeah so the other aspect of creating tech i'm gonna get into is um you want to study the hit boxes and heart boxes of moves right so the way you go about that i can show you guys that right now this is the very in-depth version. So we go to Tool Assisted's website. I'm going to put this in the chat for you guys also. You can use that. Or you can use... Um, where's the other one? Street Fighter Five difference. This is the most accurate one. I'm gonna put this one up too. So it's a matter of preference. More accurate hitbox. So I put up both versions. So this is the other aspect of developing tech. So we talked about the engine and now we're gonna kind of get into pushing the boundaries of your character. Uh, so typically when players, you know, learn a character, they just kind of study who is the best and hottest player right now right people are probably going to gravitate towards nl until the next cami wins <coughs> so when they look at nl they're like all right what is nl doing blah blah bada bing bada boom but they don't really put push the character to new heights right so me i kind of just dove off path i look at the path that they're on and i'm like oh that's what's up and then i'm like because i want to go do my own thing i want to you know push the character and, and i just want to do new things and tired of playing like everybody else so one of the ways i go about it in terms of pushing the boundaries of a character so we already talked about the engine right i want to push the boundaries of a character what you want to do is you're going to want to study the character's move set so uh, i'm not going to try to get too deep into it because it's like this can go on forever i'm not even joking because you got to think about it every character and then every possible matchup every possible hitbox hurtbox all that stuff like the collision boxes all these things tied together timing freight like all that stuff it's just like then you think about spacing and there's just so many possibilities you know that you never you can never account for everything you can't even if you're dr strange like no can't do it sorry there are going to be things that you will run into in tournament no matter if you're tokido or some joe schmo that just picked up a copy on discount at walmart that you're just not going to be able to account for everything regardless of how skilled you are you know, you'll be able to, to be ready for the generic things, but that's why you push the character forward because then you do things people aren't prepared for, right? So I will show you guys. Um, so let's see. So let's say we go to this. Um, and I will play, hmm, go to Cami, right? Obviously I play a Cami, so this is gonna be the easiest one. So we can look at any of the buttons. So we go to when you use the the sf5 sim you're gonna want to go to the top because that's gonna be the newest one the april patch 3.020 and then these are all the moves and you just basically click on any of the move descriptions and it pops up a a hitbox viewer of that move so let's say one of the buttons i like investigating right is five light kick and then you hit the script once you click on it it tells you the properties categories all that good jazz right okay and 
this is this is what it looks like this looks very bland you're probably like what is going on and i didn't take a blue pill all right look at this so we have stand light kick so the way this works is that the green box this is for any move i can go to a special right now and you're going to see the same exact thing the green box represents the hurt box Traditionally in Street Fighter and fighting games in general, there's a, a one box that's a certain color and there are other boxes that are other colors. And the way they interact within each other, there's like kind of like a set of rules, like a set of rock, paper, scissors, if you will. So think of it like this. Uh, green is paper and it loses to rock and rock would be red, right? So if we have two characters next to each other, I want to hit your green with my red without your red hitting my green. That's literally, that's how you evade people. That's why evasion footsies is so complex, but people don't study it. You know, they don't. They just study whiff punishing or they study punishing shit on block. But I think that if you study the evasion aspect of footsies, your footsies, like my footsies against NL, I thought, well, I was like, wow, NL, like I'm making you look like, like a, a novice right now. Granted, he beat me because he knows how to exploit the character, but I can learn that at any point. But the stuff that I'm learning with Cammy, I'm just so happy about. I'm like, wow, people don't even know about this shit, you know? So, like, let's say I was playing NL, right? And during certain strings, I would counter poke with Stan Light Kick. The reason being is I'm going to show you. So, if you use your arrow keys on your computer, you can change this frame by frame. So, you see how the yellow grid is shifting? So, this is frame one of the move. Frame two, frame three, frame four. So that means the fr the move is active on frame four, which is accurate because stand light kick is a four frame button. So if you're not good at notations, uh, five means standing still, meaning letting go of the stick. So if you were to look at a keypad on your keyboard and you're looking at your arcade stick, letting go of the stick and not touching it is the number five. And then if I moved it left, it would be four. Uh, to the right or forward would be six. Down, immediately down, like... A straight up down like straight down bro like straight down like ain't no downtown bro like that is number two and then up would be eight up four would be nine you know blah blah, blah. well just look at your keypad notation all right so that's what 5l cave means so this is stand like kick so stand like kick is active on frame four so if we look at the hitbox you see how the hitbox which is red again is in front of the green that means that for this portion of the move, Cammy's technically invincible. People never look at it like that, right? Think of that shit. This is basically a DP on the ground against certain buttons. But you have to figure out which button it is that this is a DP. You, you catch my drift? So this isn't going to be a DP against a, a standing heavy punch from Akuma. But this might be a DP like button against a crouching medium punch or a crouching medium kick. You catch my drift? when you're at a certain spacing so that's that's how you would study these things and the yellow is the i believe it's the i don't know how this program does it but i believe the yellow here is the collision box so if this disappears that means you can go through the character so i can show you guys an example of that so we see that frame one it's still it's red frame two it's still red frame three it's not red so that means for only two frames it's red which means what it means it's active that means i can hit you during Frames four and five of the move. Frame six, it recovers, but you see the big jump? Look at that, guys. You see where the hitbox was? The heart box is now in front of that. So if I study this move, then I would know, hey, hmm. So the risk behind this move is that even though it's really great against certain pokes, if I go for, you know, stand heavy punch with punishes, not only would I win in this situation if my hitbox is really good, but I could also potentially whiff punish because the hurt box is extended for three, three frames, right? So one, two, three, four, five frames total for me to whiff punish from a really good range. Three of the frame, three of those five frames, she has no hurt box, no hit box, so she just has a hurt box that's extended. But then after that fifth frame from the initial starting frame, so one, two, three, four, five, on that sixth frame it disappears and she's back to her standard. He's still recovering, but it's really difficult to poke her at this point. Because she's back to her initial position. All right? So the gray box is the proximity. So if I go up to Akuma, and I have him on all block. You 
See how, she, how he's flinching? That's that gray box. If that gets in touch with the opponent's, uh, I believe their collision box, it causes them to flinch. I don't know if it's a collision box. I could be wrong. I forgot the exact terminology for it, but this is what causes them to flinch. And this actually has its uses. This is really good for catching people that walk a certain amount of frames to adjust their spacing. You can throw people off by doing this. Where th somebody, let's say if I do a block string and then I walk back, uh, and then, you know, I'm in my head, I'm like, I'm going to walk back for this amount of frames. I'm going to walk back for this amount of frames. But then, let's say Akuma just randomly, I don't know, let's say... Um, yeah, I'm having a record to do this. See how I kind of flinched? It's, it, it, like, made me stutter. So my spacing might be off by a little bit. Just enough to where somebody could whiff punish me. Where I thought I was in range to avoid his stand heavy punch. But then because I flinched, I stopped for a microsecond. You see how I'm, like, stuttering? And I'm still in range for stand heavy punch. But in my head, I was like, I held back for this amount of frames. How did that happen? Because of the flinching. That's why that's really useful. That's something that people don't take advantage of. And they should be... Especially if you want to get towards the higher level. Um, this is this stuff is really good. Those like random jabs and stuff like that. They could be feints, but they also could be fucking up your walk back speed. You know, you're walking back to adjust your spacing. There's something to keep into and keep in mind. You know, if I know somebody's doing that, then I can obviously counter it, right? So no detail goes overlooked. Oh my bad, Kakura. I didn't even see the chat. So yeah, that would that stand like kick was uh, basically like a way to avoid the crouching medium kick. Right, exactly. Same exact way. Um, and it could potentially poke at the same time, you know, because if I have a an opponent's move that hits me like, let's say, let me get let me float next to my homeboy over here. Let's say like I'm next to Akuma, right, and he has a move that makes him really fat up here, and I'm doing a move that like hits in that direction like a stand like kick then i might be able to counter poke him while avoiding you know other moves like you doing moves with multiple purposes behind it is really good like you don't want to be singular in your approach in this game i think infiltration kind of proved that and everybody followed the trend um when you do something that's multi-purpose it's really good because it covers other options that you don't have to look for you can just focus on one thing like i do stand like kick to avoid this but i'm primarily doing it for this you know um so yeah so oh yeah so i was looking at hitboxes um no, 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 no. so yeah that's how you would go about exploring that um what you could also do is like let's say i take akuma right so the other thing you want to do with with tech right is with hitboxes and hurtboxes is not only to capitalize on a strength like i showed you with stand light kick but you can also take away from an opponent's strength. Remember what I was saying earlier? You want to discover tech to either push your advantage or pull your opponent away from theirs. So I'm going to show you something right now where I simultaneously do both. And the way I came about this, I was actually the first person to ever do this. But then I saw Kazunoko do this shit months, months later. I don't know if he saw me playing casuals in a major or something. I don't know. But I'm going to show you guys. This is, this is pretty good. Pretty sure you guys have seen this by now, though um let's see where is it um so we go with v trigger so i have akuma in training mode but i'm gonna show you guys i just want to show you the air fireball what the hell's air fireball what's the name of that move um that's tatsu is it this nope it's not that that's demon flip. This? Nope. Oh, maybe it is this. I have no idea what... I'm trying to look for the... Air Fireball. Where is it? Hmm. Oh, is it this? No, not it either. Let me see if I can find it on 
pull assisted instead. Oh wow, Kuma's not on this yet? Damn. Damn, heartbroken. Hmm. Um, trying to figure this out. I'm confused right now. I don't know the exact name of this move. Okay, let me just go to, let's see, Oki Calculator. Maybe this will tell me the name of the move. Goki, let's see, in the air, aerial. Quarter circle forward. Where is it? Where is it? Quarter circle forward. Ah, Duke, obviously, I want to get the air version. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah, those don't knock down. What am I doing? Duh. Silly Zaf. There it is. Boom. Okay. Oh, great. Air Hadouk. <laughs> I would have never guessed. That's the name of the move. Imagine it was actually here the whole time. I'd be so salty. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Um, I don't know where it is. Oh, is it Shin Gohado? No, I don't think this is it. Yeah, this isn't it. That's just his regular fireball. All right, whatever. Okay, so instead, I'll give you the perspective from Kami. Well, obviously, Akuma's uh, V-Trigger Air Fireball is super strong, right? And it's one of those things where it's like, it's not really a checkmate, but it definitely puts you a position or two away from it uh, once he activates V-Trigger. So when I am playing against this character, I'm like, damn, you know, that situation sucks. What can I do about it? And, you know, people try to DP it. Some people just, yeah, spiral through it. Some people try to DP it, right? Uh, whatever. And I was like, okay, what are my, you know, um, projectile invincible moves? Then I went through, went through, went through. And then one random day I found out, huh, wait a minute. EX Hooligan's projectile invincible? I was like, what? I was like, how the hell is this a thing? Right. I don't think this shows you though the exact property, but well, this doesn't show you it. But the tool assisted one, I believe it does. Let me see. Cami <laughs> EX Hooligan. Ah, perfect. This is perfect. This is actually really good. Okay, so same concept. You can use the arrows for this too. All right. How do I how do I start this though? You could you should be able to use the the um. Hmm. Well, I was able to use the arrows before. I don't know what happened with this website, but. Huh. Why isn't this working? Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So we have EX Hooligan, right? So you see that she's orange, like this box is orange. That basically means that it's projectile invincible. Because you see, if you go to the other hooligans, it's green. That's a hurt box. So the orange, you can still hit it, but you can't fireball it, right? So I was looking at this move, and I'm like, huh. This move is projectile invincible until frame 14, where the top part, you know, all right. But the bottom part is still projectile invincible. And it goes really high up, and it tracks. I'm like, hmm. I wonder if I can use this to punish Akuma's air fireball, right? This is my thought process, because I'm like, he has a prior ball. I'm trying to look for something that lets me get close to him and doesn't let me get hit by fireball. And then I was like, bing! Wow, this beautiful moment happens. So, I'm gonna record this. Okay. Let me just 
Save it. And do that again. Turn it off for a second. Mm, that's too fast. That's the wrong one. Do it again. All right? And then he can walk up and do whatever he wants. So this situation sucks because he can convert off of just basically doing this. Right? And it's a strong advantage Akuma has. That's why everybody's like, oh, you know, I think Akuma beats Kami. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, what? You guys are nonsense. Especially after I found this out. I was like, no way, Jose, from around the way. You are bugging. So what Kami could do, I mean, what we used to do before, we just do that. But it's only 80 damage, right? I mean, you could DP it, but especially with the nerf to that, that kind of like sucks. Right? That's really unreliable. I mean, you could re-trigger DP it. But you don't get the full hits. Right? So... What I realized when, when I came up with this, I was like, yo, the x Logan. And then not only do you get that, but now you're plus 19. So I could dash up and be plus 6. See that? That's a, that's a, that's a meaty as hell. That ain't like super frame 1 meaty, but it beats the uh, reversal jab if he tries to do it. So... That situation, I learned, you know, I took away an advantage, and I also established a strength. That's usually what you want to do. You want to see if you could take away something and also give yourself the advantage. But if you can't, the next best thing is just take away the advantage and then, you know, go back to the micro steps of winning the small battles of a matchup. So, little things like this. If you have an issue, then, you know, look beyond the surface level, and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to come up with an answer. But yeah, um, I think that is pretty much it as far as coming up with tech uh i try to keep it as simple as possible you're generally just going to want to study how to establish an advantage which i showed you with understanding you know oki understanding your frame data and then you know understanding the hitboxes and hurtboxes and then on the inverse if you want to take away from your opponent's strength then you want to do the same exact thing understand their frame advantage understand their hitbox and hurtbox her and understand their properties on their moves you know and and try to find holes or introduce something new that can at least thwart their um their drive and their initiative to establish something so that's how i go about it um so yeah hopefully that helped out you guys uh let me know what you guys think i'd appreciate some feedback also random but i have like a question of the day it's about Cody, upcoming DLC, in case you guys, you know, didn't know, he's coming out. And I just want to see you guys' perspectives on him as a character, what you guys think, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, let me see. Yeah, I saw him. Uh, I saw him use it too. I was like, "Word about time." I told him about that shit a while ago, but nobody ever like used it. I was like, "Yo, this shit is fucking." I think the um, the DP like the the dive kick is it's okay. Like if if you can kill with it, kill with it. But I always go for the command grab in the air because that plus eighteen and it's a it's a guaranteed knockdown. You can't back roll it because it's a grab technically. You can only quick rise it or just just not wake up. So if I dash up and I do stand medium punch and you don't wake up, then I just frame kill into the next knockdown. You know? Mm. There's actually one more thing I want to show you guys. So, this is the last thing I'm going to show you guys. Sorry, I got to backtrack, backtrack on that statement earlier saying I was done. But there's one more thing. So when we go back to quick rise situations, right? After a heavy kick spiral arrow, I'm going to give you this example. And you can use this with any character. You know how I told you there's a quick rise and there's a back roll? And back roll is five frames later. So obviously you want to take into account. You know, you want to be able to know, well, is he going to back roll or is he going to quick rise? Because there's risk behind it. Because if I do a button and I think you're going to quick rise, but then you back roll and my button's not active enough, 
then your back roll is gonna uh, make my button whiff and then you can wake up and punish me and that sucks that's not good because what ends up happening is let's say i do after this is this is heavy kick spiral arrow i do dash up stand medium punch right but if you back roll i'm in my recovery frames so i'm gonna give you a visual of that so this is what it looks like Wake up. Let's see, does he do jab? Okay, he does jab. So I'm going to do spiral arrow. Right? And I'm gonna do the same setup. Dash up strong. And it hits, right? If they back roll, it's coming out five frames later. So you see my my A that's on here for my stand medium punch, it's not hitting where the number one is for back roll. Remember I told you earlier, back roll is right over here where I'm highlighting. And then knockdown rises underneath it. So we focus on the rise first because that's the fastest, but then it's also important to understand the slowest too. You don't want to overlook anything. We see that the back roll is five frames later. So what happens is, because my A ends here, I'm now in recovery. So anytime you see R during somebody's wake up, if they're waking up, that means they can punish you. All right? So that's something you want to take into account. So I'm going to show you this is what happens. All right. So you put on back recovery. Dash up strong. I'm blocking immediately. You see that? I held back. Do it again. Dash up strong. All right. Now let's say I know he's going to do that. I got all of that. Right? But now... Let's say he knows I'm going to do that. He goes right back to the same mind game. And I get jabbed out. The reason why is because if we go back, we look at this. So instead of me doing stand medium punch, I did stand heavy kick, right? To replace that. My stand heavy kick hits him on the first active frame of his back roll. But it hits on frame five of his quick rise. So he can actually wake up with a four frame button. And I'll even show you guys that, that, that. I'll put that on right now. Let me see. Wake up. And record it as a second option. And like it. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys now. So let me throw him. Make sure that he's doing stand like it. Boom. Right? I still got counter hit. Alright. But because of priority, you can't wake up and do like, uh, what is it? Stand medium kick, I believe. Stand medium kick is five frames. Let's see. Yeah, it is five frames. So he can't wake up and do stand medium kick because priority will happen, right? And we talked about priority. I'm doing a heavy and heavy has more priority than medium. Because he can get counter hit. Right? So, with that in mind, you, you, you'd have to, like, be really aware of, is my opponent back rolling mid-screen, or is he quick rising? That's why it's really good on your first knockdown to dash up and pay attention. Like, go about what you're doing, but just pay attention to it, you know? Um, sometimes even sacrifice the damage. Like, just watch. It's good to watch sometimes just to see like what do they do sometimes they'll backdash and give you all the information in the world and then now you can start to prepare for backdash so let's say if i knock you down and i know you're gonna backdash i hit yochi with this the uh dominican Nakuma player he kept doing uh wake up backdash against me right the entire money match and i was like okay i got you bro and there was that one time where i had v trigger and this was two two in the money match it was first of three and i did back throw and i had like five percent health he had like 20 percent health right and i backed through him and i was like this oops i don't even have to do something i was like hey, why, why do you wake up oh i didn't have, didn't have it on oopsies but i reacted to it i promise i was like this and that you see how late that hit that was like i'll do it even later so you can see he was blocking right watch this Oh, I have to put it on all block. Oops. Let's 
you can actually react to this. All I have to do is buffer. Just buffer during it. But you see, if I'm off, he blocks it. And then, you know, you get, you get your obvious conversion, right? It's really easy to, to get down, but... Um... Yeah, so like, you just want to get information like that when you knock somebody down. It's really important. So the last aspect of this that I'm going to show you guys is that... Oh, Kakarot, this is going to answer your question right now about rapid canceling. There are certain characters that can cover both wake-ups because you need two very fundamental things to happen. That Think of it as truths. You have to have two things happen specifically for you to get this. You have to be close to your opponent, regardless of what wake-up they do, back roll or quick rise, and you have to be active on both wake-ups. Right? You have to be active on both wake-ups to cover both wake-ups. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. So, can we spiral arrow? We go back to this exact example. Heavy kick spiral arrow. All right. So, what we want to do is we want a button that hits this frame three that has priority, right? That has priority and hits frame three, but also hits frame one of back roll, right? That's like the, that's the, the easiest way to do it. So the easiest way to do that is you find a button that, ha that has four active frames. So stand heavy kick is the perfect button for this. Cause I literally hit frame three and frame one. So against Akuma, all I'd have to do is find something that is, what is this, 14, I think? Let's see, what is this? Yeah. So after a spiral arrow, if I do crouching light kick, stand around house, Akuma can't do shit. He has, to, he has to block or DP. Like, or he can back roll and V trigger. I mean, that's an option too. Right? Um, but that's super high level shit. So you don't have to worry about that. So we go to the game. I'm going to show you guys an example. So you want to be close, right? So if we're doing this mid-screen, this won't work because I'm not staying close to him when he does back roll. Oh, I'll show you. So if I do... Let's back on this. That won't work because I'm not close to him. So that's one of the essentials that are already violated. So it's like, all right, move on to the next thing, in my opinion. But what you could do is you could store that exact setup for when you are in the corner because they can't move back, even if they back roll. So you see how this changes everything? So because of that, it's like, ah, oh, all right. And that hit mad meaty. Probably could do some pretty sick twisted shit with that. Uh, that combo? Let's see. Let's see. I gotta V trigger cancel that. Oh, that definitely caught. I think that comboed. Pretty sure that comboed. Yeah, that comboed. So, um, let me see how I just came up with tech like randomly like that. You just, your mind just kind of like goes, oh, let me just try this. So, um, what was, uh, oh yeah, so you want to cover, this is one of the ways to do it, is uh, you, Generally, the rules of, of covering both wake-ups is you want to be close and you want a button that has four active frames, right? So the thing about the being close, like with any rule, rules can be broken. There are, there's a time and place, right? And one of the places that the being close rule breaks is that if you're in the corner because you're always close, right? Like, you, that's that. Like, you don't have to do a forward moving attack because you're in the corner. So I guess that would be actually the rule is you want to use a forward progressing, like you want to move into the uh, meaty. So like... If I do this and dash, this is really good because I'm really close, right? So you want to move forward, but you can violate that rule of moving forward on dual wake-ups. That's what I like to call it, dual wake-up setups, because it covers quick rise and back roll. 
you don't have to do a moving forward setup in the corner because they're in the corner they can't move so that's when i could do a different type of frame kill i can get more creative because i don't have to do dash when you do dash it's 16 frames but you know it's like very static i have very little options afterwards and then i have to do a very certain poke because then reach matters and all that stuff right so um Actually, not after Spiral Arrow because after Spiral Arrow, she's pretty close, but not close enough for like a roundhouse because that's too slow. So what we do then is the next best thing. And that is we look at a move that has four total active frames, right? So we already got the spacing now. We said move forward and we know when to violate that. We can violate that when we're already in the corner. Otherwise, you generally want to use your first frame kill to move forward so you can stay close to him. So now the next thing is if we are moving forward, the next best thing is to use... Oh, damn, I totally did this backwards. God damn it. That's supposed to be dash. Right? Oh, no, no, wait. What am I doing? Yeah, that was supposed to be crouching light kick. I don't know why I did that backwards. That was really weird. But whatever works for your preference. The first move should be the first move. I did that so backwards. I don't know what was wrong with me. So, um... Yeah, this was definitely supposed to look like this. Okay. Sorry for that confusion if that messed with anybody. So now we do dash forward because now we're going to go to the mid screen example. So I'm doing dash forward. And stand roundhouse doesn't work because I would get poked by quick rise. Stand uh, three frame button. I would lose to that, right? So I have to figure out, well, I have to have a button that's active here then. It's active for four frames here. Do I have any other options? And lift combination? Mm. Eh, nope. I mean, I could use it over here, but after a dash mid screen, and then we look at the poke, I don't think this is gonna work because of how stubby it is, right? And I'd have to delay it. That's just too many things I'd have to like get involved. And I don't want to do that. So we go back and then we do a little more research. And we say, all right, after a dash, all right, do I have any other four frame, any four frame actives? Those are jump attacks. We don't use those. Um, nope, 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 nope. I mean, you can use specials, but they're not safe. So it's like, eh, eh. No, those are a lot too long on startup. Okay, so then the next thing is if you don't find normals and specials to do it with, then I use chain attack. Because I think chain attacks are like the hardest because of the consistency. They're like the more difficult. They're not hard, but they're just slightly harder is what I'm saying. So then we look at this. We look at chained buttons. So we see, oh, we chain this. This is two active frames. Two and two. That equals four. But does this cover that timing? Covers frame one, but then frame the the second jab doesn't come out until the fourth frame of back roll. So I would get I would get hit with a wake up um, a wake up three frame, and I would get a trade with the wake up four frame. I don't want that. So then I go to the next thing. I say okay, all right. Well, that's twenty frames total. Well, I need something exactly less than that. So what's the next chain that's faster than that? You can go to the bottom where it gives you the order from uh most total animations to the least and we look at the chain attacks you see anything that says standing light punch and then chain that's a chain attack right so you see crouching light punch chain crouching light punch huh well this is two frames less and it has six active frames total this sounds cheap hmm then we waltz over and you go hi karumba what the hell this covers frame one of both wake-ups? Wow. That's insane. And then we go and lab it. And we want to see if this is really true. And this is really true. <laughs> so you see, I do. So to test this again, we do the fastest button, which is jab. Pick up jab. Okay. And let me test it right here. So that hit back roll. Now let's see if it hits 
I always start with quick rise. I always start with quick rise, but I forgot to do it there. And that hits that too. So now I'm gonna mix it. So then let's see you can come up with frame kills and stuff like that. See? So I covered every rate wake up. Oh what the fuck? I'm I'm such a fucking clown. I'm sorry. Forgive me guys, please. I didn't put it on random. Ah, what the hell? See? I covered both. I covered all three wake-ups. Didn't even have to think about it. I just... And mind you, I didn't even try that. I just made that setup up for the non-rise because I've studied it so much. In my head, I'm already doing, I'm like kind of doing not the math entirely, but I'm like, this should work. And then it just works out. So I can just kind of frame kill in my head, which is fucking weird. I probably should be in a psychiatric unit, but that doesn't matter. That's besides the point. All right, don't judge me. But yeah. So yeah, that's how you would go about covering um, both wake ups. I think every character should try that with their character because that would make your offense so much more impressive. So yeah. I hope that helped, guys. Uh, give me some feedback. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. Why am I, like, floating? Like, what the hell? Weird. The chain is so easy, Kamora. You just gotta practice it. It was really weird at first, but you just gotta practice it. Once you practice it, it's like, yo, why haven't I been doing this? I'm telling you, it's so good, bro. It's so good. How do you figure out the chain of jabs? Let's say you want three or four jabs instead of two. So what do you mean by that? I just realized I didn't have my headphones on the entire stream, so I'm sorry for whoever followed me and I didn't even realize it. Because I didn't even hear my notifications. My headphones are just right here, like, the entire time. I didn't even have them on my head. Mr. Little Evil, what's up, brother? How dare you blacklist me? What I do to deserve this? Oh, so, okay, um, so if you want to do multiple jabs, uh, I believe, I, I don't remember how exactly, huh, um, let me see, 
That's kind of weird, because I remember, like, my cami one, when I was looking at it, it had, like... Well, camis, it has multiple. It has three. It has four, actually. I can show you right now. Let's see. They're, like, camis right here. It has, um... It has five. Uh, it has, a uh, four of them, of a standing jabs right here, so... I go up here you'll see it on the chart you see i don't know if i don't know if every character is like that but cami's is uh, i don't Where is my GIF? I'm trying to show you guys something. Oh, here it is. Word. Oh. I just have to. I have to probably screenshot this. Show you guys. Um. Hmm. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It is. Is it under? Downloads? Nope. Under... Where would it be? I'm trying to show you guys this. We can... Oh, you know what? I know what to do. <laughs> Let me see. And how do I make this like? Well, I guess I have to go to my Gmail account. I'm trying to put this GIF on the on the screen, but it's like giving me a hard time. For whatever reason. Aha! Finally! Okay, I think I figured it out, guys. Boom! So, Thursday. This is going to be my second series. So, Monday is going to be my Master Mon Mastery Mondays. Alright, cool. But then Thursday is going to be my Analysis Paralysis series. So basically, it is going to be me reviewing just matches, tournament sets. It can be, you know, matches of the audience, viewers, whatever. I don't know. Uh, probably gonna stick to like more so tournament players, but I'll have like you know my little sprinkles here and there of appreciation towards my chat, where I'll just like review matches and then we could talk about things, give feedback, work on strategies and stuff like that. And uh, so that's gonna be every Thursday at seven o'clock, same time. So twice a week I'll be definitely streaming one thousand percent unless I go to a major. That's the only way I'm not gonna be like streaming. Like say if I go to like a West Coast major, like Evo or something. I won't be here on a Thursday. I usually will fly out on Thursday morning. But you guys would know that in advance, right? So, um, yeah. So, I hope you guys would participate. Come check it out. Uh, you know, spread the word. Let people know. I don't think you're going to get this type of quality in many other streams, to be honest. There are a couple of people I can think of that would uh, that would be able, or being willing, rather, to do this. Because there are a lot of people that are able to do it. But are they willing to do it? I don't know um so yeah i think you guys would really like this i think this is pretty dope 
Um, I thought, I don't know, I thought of Ryu getting hit by a bunch of books and it sounded funny to me. So, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so guys, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, it's been a nice, roughly two and a half hour stream. I think I covered a lot of ground. I don't want to like overwhelm people, but yeah, if, if you haven't already, please follow me on Twitch. Um, feel free to spread the word, let people know. I'm trying to become a Twitch partner. So that way I can really like, you know, buckle down and start pumping out content. Um, cause I, I kind of lose motivation sometimes, man. Cause I'm like, damn, I don't have all the emojis. I have so many ideas, but then it's like, I'm limited cause I'm an affiliate and blah, blah, blah. But it's whatever. One step at a time. You know, the focus right now is to just grow and then everything else will just kind of come with it. But yeah, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I hope I really helped. If there is anything you want to critique me on, you can just feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Zafarino1. It's the same as my Twitch. Um, you can follow me on here on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch. You can also uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have that also as an option. I'm going to be putting stuff up there. I'm going to probably put up my archives of my streams. Um, and what else? Yeah, that's basically... I'm thinking about doing like little random things. Um, maybe like having a book of the day or book of the week stuff that I'm reading because I constantly read. And I know there's like some people that are... I like to read and stuff like that, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's it for that. Uh, I'm going to just spend these last eight minutes until 8.30, or 9.30, rather, just talking to the chat, seeing how you guys are doing. So, yeah, that's basically it. Um, guys, I don't know. But yeah. My man, Zaf. You're a filthy candy player. It's a given. I don't know what that was in reference to because it was probably like a couple minutes ago, but I'll take it as a compliment. Excited to see that, especially considering you gave me that godlike Akuma matchup advice. Oh, yeah, word. No doubt. Jeff, I mean, let's be real. You've helped me out too. Whoops. Sorry, don't call Peta. It's just a mosquito. Um, yeah, you've helped me out too, man. Remember when I used to travel in 4 and stuff and we'd play and I would just like ask you and you'd tell me about how where I'm overexerted and stuff like that. So it's only right I pay it forward, bro. It's not like you haven't helped me either, you know? And even if you didn't help me, it's like you're helping me by letting me help you. It's kind of weird, but yeah. Um. So yeah, sorry about not being there on time. Hey guys, Zaf is teaching people high level stuff about fighting games. Fact, I like, check it out. All right, thank you, bird, bird. Now, can you get me from bronze to super bronze? Oh, absolutely, bro. You know I got you. What is some advice for fighting bison with Karen, Zav? Um, okay, so anytime you have like a character with a really long poke like that, like which would be his psycho axe, you'd want to be in range of it and counter poking it with like high pokes, like standing jabs. You can actually like jab him out of it, believe it or not. And it's actually really easy, but the thing is you can't if if you're at max range. You can't do it because by the time it reaches you, it's in the active frames. But if you're inside a Psycho Axe range, but just outside a low forward range, it's actually really easy to do that. So what he has to start doing is he has to start, like, walking forward and crush countering you. Or he has to start doing stand medium kick. But if he starts doing stand medium kick, you just walk back with punish. So it's like, there's that whole dichotomy right there going on, your interaction with him. Um, but I would generally say, try to be outside of range of Psycho Axe just to test the discipline. Anytime you have a button that's really abusable like that just test their spacing like me honestly against a lot of bisons i just make them miss that shit because my spacing is better than like 99 percent of the people that play this game doesn't mean i'm a better player i'm just saying my spacing and they just give me damage you know and they give me that it's just the spacing game if you look at japan they usually play the spacing game first because in terms of if you look at the hierarchy of risk reward if i have better spacing than you it is very difficult for you to punish me you know what I'm saying? It's very difficult for me to actually lose the battle if I have a better spacing than you. But if you're if you're very keen and sharp about that, and you understand walking forward, you understand like the mind games going into that, then that's when it's like it shifts the quality of the game. You know, that's when it's like you have to be better in other areas. So don't give your opponent the benefit of the doubt. Test their spacing first. Be outside of Psycho Axe range. You know, test the, the amount of squares. I showed you guys how to do that. I can show you really quick. Just uh measure the distance from the front what i usually do is i'll put like my character on the thick black line and then i'll save it if you guys don't use this this is really good 
go to our basic settings, go to shortcut settings. And if you have an arcade stick that has a touchpad on it, this is exceptional. What you do is this makes training mode way easier and way more accurate. Go to shortcut settings and you turn on save status at the bottom and replay save status. And what that does is when you hit R3, it saves the state. It takes a picture of what's going on on the screen. Let's say I do this. Anytime I hit L3, which is the next button, it basically reloads that picture right where I took it. You see? I just keep it in the button. Keep it in it. And it pops me right back into that moment. So if you want to practice your spacing, like what I do is I take a picture with my front foot there and then have the opponent walk back. Let's say they walk right here. Right, and then I whip a jab, something that doesn't move forward, so I can see. Oh, this gives me enough time to press pause if in case I want to record, because you know it gets annoying when you want to record, but then they keep moving and fucking up the spacing. So I always do jab and then do the button afterwards. So let's say I do I want to measure stand fears. Jab fears. Right. And I move I move forward a square. Doesn't hit me, move forward a square. But I always save every time you move forward. Doesn't hit me, saved again, doesn't hit me, doesn't hit me, doesn't hit me. That was definitely two squares. Doesn't hit me, move forward, next square. Doesn't hit me, next square. Doesn't hit me, next square. Doesn't hit me. Does it hit me now? Still doesn't hit me. Now? Ah, uh, still doesn't hit me. So now you can tell yourself, like, when you take this picture, when you move forward and it hits you at the next range, you're like, oh, okay, so at exactly six squares distance, six small squares of distance from my opponent's front foot and my front foot, at this exact range that Stan Fierce was. Like, it will not hit me. Unless I crouch. But see, that's why you don't crouch in footsies. But that's another lesson. You see? So then you do want to do the same thing with the button that's giving you the most difficulty. And then you want to measure the buttons from that range. What are the other buttons that can hit me from that range? Sweep hits me. Okay, that's good to know. We know sweep hits. That whiffs. So that's how you'd go about the spacing thing, but hopefully that helps him out. If it doesn't, tell Capital Hero to come through. He's more than welcome to ask me questions and I will answer to the best of my ability. I actually think that match is 5 5, but I'm not a bison or carrying player. It's hard both ways, in my opinion. Yeah, I can see that. It was definitely in her advantage before, but um, maybe not so much now. Well, personally, when you have an abusable button, I'll intentionally do it. Then insert the fear and make them think about it. See how much I can get away with. So with that, it's Dan Roundhouse. Yeah, that's that's good. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. The key to beating Cammy. Oh my god, why am I so blurry? The key to beating Cammy, I can give you this in the next 30 seconds of advice, is move forward. Because if you think about it, the reason why people complain about Cammy is just because of dive kick. That's literally it. But if you move forward... I have to hit you at your foot. So if this is my foot, I have to hit you like this to be plus, right? Like your knees and below to be plus. But how can I do that? So let's say I'm doing this, right? But if I move forward, look what happens. Now I'm hitting you higher. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm hitting you sooner and I'm hitting you higher. So now you're messing up my spacing. That's why moving forward is the best thing to do against Cami. It seems kind of counterintuitive, but that's how you got to think outside of the matchup, you know? Like, you know how when Daigo was losing an infiltration, everybody's like, Daigo, stop throwing fireballs. What'd he do? He figured out a way to beat him by using more fireballs. It's like, what? <laughs> he just had to use a different fireball, you know, in Street Fighter 4. Like, that's how you got to think outside the box. But with Ed, I kind of struggled there. But how about defending against Cammy otherwise? Against Cammy, um, 
if she's doing a lot of ticks, I would say, like, if she's doing a lot of light attacks, I would say blocking and backdashing is really good against her. Because if she messes up, they usually will go, they kind of autopilot the string and they'll end up pressing a button follow up and then you can kind of punish her on recovery. If they're doing mediums, I would say just block the mediums until she's out of range of throw because then that's where you start to pay attention to their offense. Because I can't stand medium punch and walk and walk up and throw you. But if I do stand medium punch, stand medium punch, then it's like, all right, now I'm pushing myself even further away. I'd have to stand medium punch and walk up and press it again. But if I walk up, that right there is like an automatic you can three frame it. I mean, it's not like you can see it, obviously, in real time, right? But you catch my drift. Oh, I got to check my stream labs to see who just followed me today because I haven't seen any of that. Forgive me, guys. You see dashboard. So unjust frame subbed. Oh, that was four days ago. Okay. Uh, Pandoy25, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. And that was it for today. Yeah, it's just mainly the pushback that kind of pisses people off. So yeah, alright guys, I'm off. Um, I'll be back Thursday. I'm gonna make a, a straw poll of the matches that you guys might want me to review. So I'm gonna up I'm gonna put that up tomorrow afternoon. Um so like around like three o'clock Eastern. I'm gonna have that up all day Wednesday and then Thursday, based off of what the results are, I will pick that match that has the most percentage you know of votes or whatever so that way it's up to you guys but i'm gonna keep it within my like three options that i want to uh review you know so but yeah all right guys again feel free to follow me on here i appreciate you guys wholeheartedly and i hope i helped follow me on twitter at zafarino one let people know let people know on reddit let people know on facebook twitter youtube i don't know anywhere that there are people so somebody might need me, you know? You never know. So, all right, guys. Peace out of 5,000.